Dearly beloved, uh, I'm highly privileged, honored, and uh, excited to be here for another edition of Moment of Refreshing today, where we bring you light from the word. This is brought to you by Fortizo Ministries. My name is Gabriel Adigwe Gaudishina. I'm the pastor of the Voice of God Church here in London uh, and in Portsmouth. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Uh, before we go on, I just want us to say a little prayer. Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for this moment. Father, we ask that you bless us with fresh manna this morning. Amen. Let it be washing of water by the word. Father, make my tongue the tongue of the learned. Amen. Make it the pen of the ready writer. Father, reveal your heart to your people Amen. that they might be enlightened in the mighty name of Jesus. You Amen. see, your people perish because they lack knowledge. Father, we don't want to perish, but Father, we want to increase. We want to grow. We want to know you more to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, as your people watch, O oh Lord. Father, spark spiritual fires, O oh Lord. Let there be revivals, O oh Lord. That which is missing, let them receive. Let them receive breakthroughs. Let them receive understanding to the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Today, I'm going to be sharing a topic with you. I'll not be teaching. I'll be preaching. This is something that is happening to many people, but I, I, the Lord just wants to bring this out that many of us might be delivered, that you might not be by the waters and be thirsty. That is the topic. Is it possible for a man or a woman to be by the waters and still be thirsty? Many people are going through this, and the Lord, in his infinite mercy, wants to deliver us today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, our father, Pastor Tokumbo Shokoya, cannot be here today. But um, like the Lord Jesus said, when well, you have seen me, you have seen my father. Because my, I mean, my father and my father is in me. And before we came, we received this blessing. Amen. Amen. And we know that you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Is it possible for him, somebody to be by the waters and still be thirsty? Yes, it is possible. I think the disciples of Jesus witnessed this and they began to ask him that, Lord, we that we are under the tree, we are not benefiting from this tree. Amen. And he started asking, look, we have sacrificed so many things. And uh, the Lord said, don't worry. There's none that will sacrifice anything for me that will not repeat a hundredfold. A hundredfold. Amen. Today, in many churches, in many gatherings, amongst the children of God, we experience something, it is possible for a drought, for you to have a drought of miracles in a church. And the man of God will go outside and miracles will be happening. It is possible for people not to be experiencing one of the benefits of fatherhood, of having a spiritual father. If time permits, I will share some of these benefits with us of having a father in the Lord. And is it possible that you are not benefiting from his ministry? And I'll tell you, yes. And this is why the Lord wants to deliver us by his grace today. Amen. Amen. I will speak on honor, the missing miracle seed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everywhere we see miracles in the Bible, there is always something that is attached to it, honor. When a man of God is honored, miracles follow. If you go to the book of 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 7 to 16, you see what transpired between the prophet Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. Amen. Amen. You will experience that this widow provided... For the man of God. She honored the word of that man of God because I don't know how many of us can do it today. The woman just had little to survive on with her son. And the man of God said, bring it. And she honored and brought it forward. And the miracle was released. And after that, she never laxed again. Paraventure, you have been struggling with your giving. And you believe, oh, you know, there are so many things that are going on in the body of Christ today. Oh, you know, 
prosperity gospel. People are asking. But I want you to understand today that giving and sowing is a principle of the kingdom of God. It is a, is a kingdom principle, irrespective of whether take, people take undue advantage of it or not. You cannot let anybody discourage you. It is a kingdom principle. And if you are part of the body of Christ, you have to honor godly principles for you to reap in due season. Amen. Amen. The Bible encourages us not to be weary in well-doing. So don't be weary in well-doing. Now, there is a, also a concept in the body. That, that, you know, there's a school of thought that because the temple veil has torn, it is me and my God. You know, I pray to God and he will answer me directly. And, um, but if you go to the book of Ephesians chapter 4, where the Lord began to speak, he said, He that ascended, he first descended, he took captivity captive. He said he gave gifts unto men. He made it known that the fivefold ministry is a gift to the body that the body might be perfect. So in other words, for members of that body to grow, the fivefold ministry is still needed, to mentor the people, to feed them with the word. And yes, it is true, the Lord will feed the people through the leaders. Leadership, a people without a head or without a leader, you know, they, 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 they cannot progress. Praise the Lord. You cannot progress. There's a saying that without a father, you won't go further. You need a father. Amen. You need a father to go further. Are there, Apostle Paul, if you go to the Act of the Apostles, chapter 9, even though Apostle Paul said, the gospel I preach, I was taught by no man. If you go to Act of the Apostles, chapter 9, verse 13, there was a man called Ananias. The Lord spoke to Ananias and told him to go to Paul. And it is written in the scriptures that after he met with Paul, Paul went. After Apostle Paul met with the Lord Jesus, and he was blind, he met with the Lord, and uh, the Lord commissioned him. He still needed, this is somebody who had an encounter with the Lord. But the Lord made it known to him that there's an authority structure in the body of Christ. And this is what people are failing to understand today. There's an authority structure in the body of Christ. And you have to honor that, you have to honor authority. Amen. Amen. And I would just want us to, I want us to see this authority and to know that not honoring the people God has set above us will be dishonoring God. If you go to the book of Romans chapter 13, if you read from 1 to 7, you will see where God began to speak about authority. He said there is no authority that is established that is not of God. And there's a clear distinction between godly authority and God-appointed authority. They are two different things. All, all, but all authority is appointed by God. But not authority are godly. Amen. Amen. If you go to the book of Daniel chapter 4 verse 17, it said God rules in the affairs of men. And there's a saying in my language, they said, uh, there are 10 kings and 10 seasons. And God raises different kings at different seasons. People like Pharaoh, who was a tyrant and a dictator and a terrible king, many people do not understand that it was even God that raised, that raised Pharaoh. He put him there. If you go to the book of Exodus chapter 19, verse 16, he said, God said, for this purpose... Has he, has he raised the Pharaoh? So it was God that put Pharaoh there. If you look at somebody like Nebuchadnezzar also, if you go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 43 verse 10, God called Nebuchadnezzar his servant. He said, Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. Because God raises them to do a job. It depends on how the heart of the people is. That is how God will raise a leader for them. 
There are many controversies concerning uh, uh, King Saul, where many people believe that, well, it was politicking people, it was the choice of the people. We are forgetting that our God is all-knowing, and even before the people rebelled, God already knew, and he had already made provision for it, because our God operates in present, past, and future. If you go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 15, you will see it there, where God made it clear that he raised this man called Saul. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And if you go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 10 to 11, you see where God said, I regret. He said, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul to be king over my people. So it is actually God that set up Saul over his people. I'm just giving you this foundation so that you will know that there is no authority that rules that is not of God. Whether they be godly or not, it is still God that is ruling in the affairs of men. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So in the body of Christ, God has put people there to rule over us. And we believe that there will be godly men whom God has put his spirit in, 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 in them. And they will have the heart of a father caring for the people, loving the people, teaching them and feeding them. But there are things that are required from the people also. If you go to the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, it says people should submit to them that have authority over them. It says because they are the ones that guard over your souls and they will give account. Praise the Lord. Because a shepherd guards the sheep. While the sheep is sleeping, the shepherd stands watch. He's at watch, watching for the attack of animals. And the Bible says... It will be good for you that you make that job pleasant and easy for them. So they are, and somebody has asked me this question before. He said, but the Bible says, call nobody father upon the face of the earth. You know, call nobody in the world a father. And I said, yes, that is interesting. But a godly father, is he actually in the world? Because when the Lord Jesus began to speak, we will use scriptures to explain scriptures. He said, You are in the world, but not of the world. So a godly spiritual father should be seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus above principalities and powers. And if you go to the book of 1 Timothy chapter uh, 1 verse 2, you see there where Apostle Paul said, Timothy, my son whom I have begotten in the gospel. So so you cannot say it is only in the old, it is an Old Testament thing. But also in the new, we see Apostle Paul being a father to Timothy. And this is all through the scriptures. You see that God is even called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So God understands the father and sonship relationship. But sons are expected to honor their fathers. Whether father, biological father or spiritual fathers, you are supposed to honor them. And God showing the example being our spiritual father, being the father of all. And the book of Malachi, he said, if I be your father, where is my honor? And how do we honor God? Or how do we honor fathers? I will share that with you so that we might gain understanding. And there are rewards for honoring fathers. The psalmist says we should honor God even with our substance. You honor God with your substance. Yes, it's a good thing to give your life to Christ and go to church and sing praises to him. But eventually you are one of those that believe that, oh, as long as I sing praise to God, that is okay. That is fine. But the truth about it is that it's a principle of the kingdom of God that if you do not give, you will not receive. And this is no gimmick. Yes, people might have used this to their, uh, to their advantage, but the truth of it is that it is a principle of the kingdom. You have to give to receive, and you have to honor those that God has put above you. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, the Lord says the elders, they deserve double honor. 
elders in the church, elders in your biological family, they deserve double honor. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If we go into the word, you see that there are different people God expects us to honor in the world, from the word of God. If we go, I want to, so, um, Brother Femi, tell me read from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 9. We have an authority structure in the body of Christ, and the first on that list is our God, the Almighty Himself. And the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 9, what does it say? Honor the Lord with thy substance. It says, Honor the Lord with your substance. So, which means from that which he has blessed you with, you honor him with it. And so, with the first fruits of all thy increase. And with the first fruits of all thy increase. In other words, don't let giving to God be an afterthought. As you are being blessed, that is the first thing that should come to your mind. Because he owns everything in the first place. Amen. Amen. So honoring God should not be a challenge for us. So if we have an authority structure that the Bible has provided us with, number two on that list will be our parents. After God, it is your parents, spiritual and biological. And this is why we have to teach the youths and people who are coming up either in the word or even outside there. We should teach our children that honor is a biblical principle and it has to be fulfilled. Whether the parents are spiritual or biological. And like I explained, the same way Elijah was a father to Elisha. And Paul was a father to Timothy. The prophet Moses was also a father to Joshua and Caleb. It is a principle, fatherhood is a principle ordained by God. It is a kingdom principle because there are advantages of having a father. Amen. And Amen. God requires us to honor our fathers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And honoring a father is the first principle, is the first commandment with a promise. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother that it might be well with you. And that your days might be long. And he also says, obey your parents in the Lord. So God knows that you have fathers in the Lord. When Apostle Paul was preaching, he said, I know you have many mentors, but you will not have many fathers. Not honoring men of God that are set before you, or even your biological parents, might cause you to be by the waters and you still be thirsty. Because in God's authority structure, there are some he has given spiritual authority over your life. And they can speak into your life. They can speak over your life. And whatever they speak shall come to pass. And that is all through the Bible. If you go and read about the story about, uh, of Noah, after Noah got drunk with wine and one of his children uncovered his nakedness. And instead of covering his father's nakedness, he went to call the others. He exposed the father. And we read in the scriptures that Noah caused harm and it was so. And if you go and look at when the man, Jacob, that became Israel, was blessing his children, which later became the fathers of the 12 tribes of Israel, every word he spoke concerning them stood. Praise the Lord. So there's an authority and a power the Lord has given to fathers, either biological or spiritual. And because it is a, it is a kingdom principle, even if you don't honor that father and he loves you so much and he wants the best for you, the miracle seed will not be released. God will not make you receive what you should receive. Because it is out of honoring that man of God that he will bless. There's a difference between prayers and blessings. Somebody can pray for you, 
but you need the blessing. The blessing of the Father is important. And in everybody's life, we should walk to receive the blessing of our fathers, either spiritual or biological, and even the blessings of our mothers as well, because they are part of the authority structure God has put above us. Is, the only, is this only the structure? No. If we go to the book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 32, the Lord also spoke about the gray-headed. In other words, people who are elders within our community. He expects us to honor them as well. How do you honor elders in your community? By respecting them, by greeting them. You are in a boss, you are in a public place, you are in a family gathering, you see them standing up. You, you, and you are seated, you stand up, you offer them the seat. Even if they have a seat, you honor them by standing up. And also, with your substance. Honor does not come without giving your substance. Because we saw that in the book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. He said God expects us to honor him with our substance. You honor fathers with substance. Not only with uh, our mouth. Because also if you go, if you study the, 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 the relationship between Elisha and the widow of Zarephath. That woman honored the man of God. Said, I know there's a man of God that passes through here. She gave him an apartment to live. She would have rented it out. But she gave it to the man of God. And that man said, I perceive this woman must have a need. And Gehazi said, I've not seen any children running around. And the man of God said, by my word, by this time next year, you shall have a son. And it was so. So there's a difference between a blessing and a prayer. Nobody can pray for you, but God is the amen. He will see whether you have obeyed kingdom principles. Somebody has asked me before, oh, is it possible for your father to block your blessings? No. It is the Lord that is the amen. But if the Lord sees that you are not honoring the, those sets, above you, then you are in violation of his word. He said that it might be well with you, that it is well with you, means in every area of your life, that you will be fruitful, that you will prosper, that you will be healthy, that everything you lay your hands upon will blossom and will be fruitful, that you will have increase, that you will break through. You can fast and pray all you like, but without honor, it will not be well. That is the word of God. He said, honor your father and your mother that it might be well. So there might be things that we are struggling with. We have fasted. We have prayed. But nothing is working. Honor might be the missing link. Honor might be that miracle seed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If we go to the first part of the God's honor list, he said we should honor our spouses. In the book of First Peter chapter 3, he said men should honor their wives. But in the book of Esther, he said wives should honor their husbands also. So it is part of God's authority structure that he expects us to honor. Number five, he says those in authority. If we go to the book of Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 7. And I want us to read this scripture and gain understanding of this scripture. Romans 13, 1 to 7. Those in authority, either spiritual or physical or in, in, in social life. The police, they carry some form of authority. The law courts, they carry authority. God expects us to honor those authorities. Because it is him that put them in place. Governors, presidents, senators. They are people who have some form of authority. And as children of God, we are supposed to show good example by honoring authorities God has placed there. You might say, but these men, they are ungodly people. God has placed them there. Praise the Lord. There is a purpose. There is always a reason and a purpose for everything that God does. 
Amen. Amen. Sometimes God put difficult leaders to train us to bring out the best in us. Amen. Amen. So I want us to quickly read that scripture from the book of Romans. Can you read it for us, please? Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Be subject to the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. There is no power put in place but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Either powers in the home, powers in the church, or powers in the community, community leaders, or leaders in the country. Go on. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted yes. the ordinance of God. Yes. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Aha. Uh -huh. He says anybody that resists the ordinance, the authority God has placed there shall receive damnation. Hold on. Damnation from who? From the man of God? No, it's from God. Because that man, that woman has delegated authority from God. God has set that place there for a reason. And if you don't honor them, you are dishonoring God. How do you honor men of God? Or how do you honor parents? By obeying them. David said, my son, said, obey the words of your father. Let it be in your heart. So when a father gives an instruction and it is disobeyed, it's a form of dishonor. Even if that man of God, or even if that leader does not know, God knows. And Bible says it's the one that judges between man and man, cattle and cattle. The word of God says God is the God of knowledge to whom all actions are weighed. So there are times a man of God or a woman of God can give you instruction or a leader can give you instruction. And say they are saying their own. That's not, I don't believe it. I, do, I don't agree. And I don't, you know. And you're in disobedience. And yet, you want the blessings of God. Disobedience might shut the heavens. Disobedience might make you be by the rivers and not drinking of the waters. Praise the Lord. Continue. Hallelujah. For rulers are not a terror of good works, yes. but to the evil. Yes. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Will you, you not that be afraid of the good? power? They have no power of their own, but the power of God. It is a grace that has been released by the Lord. Amen. Amen. And thou shalt have praise of the same. Uh -huh. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. He said he is the minister of God to thee for good. He is ministering for your good. That man of God is ministering for your good. The woman of God is ministering for your good. But your parents are there to minister unto you also. The police are ministering to you. If the police are not there, yes, you can say some policemen are corrupt, but they are still a deterrent. They should be a deterrent to crime. Amen. Amen. But if they are not doing their job, it does not mean that you should not do your job. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number six on the line will be pastors. Why will pastors come again? Because it is not every pastor that will be your spiritual father. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You might be under a pastor and it might only be your mentor and your father might be somewhere else. It is God that chooses our spiritual father. The same way you did not choose your biological parents, you cannot choose your spiritual parents. It is by the revelation of God that you will know who your spiritual parents is. But that is not the topic of today. I will have dealt with the subject of how to know whom your spiritual father is. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number seven. Most people do not know that it is a requirement to honor your bosses at work. A true child of God should be loyal and should be faithful, even at work. Because you are earning a wage. You should earn that wage. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When we call sick, when we are not sick, it is not right. You have somewhere to go, but you are lying that you have somewhere to go. You are not honoring that boss. When you are not given the number of hours you are contracted to do as a child of God, even late coming, persistent late coming or leaving work early unnecessarily, you are lying, you are cheating, you are dishonoring the contract, you are dishonoring God. And that sort of a person that is playing gimmicks at work might not prosper at that work. And it is not a cause for many one. It is a kingdom principle. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number eight, honoring the brethren. The Bible expects us you honor one another. The, the person does not need to carry a title. The greatest title anybody can have on the face of this earth is to be a child of God. To be the son of the most high God. Being a servant of God, yeah, it's good. But I would rather, I'm happy to be the son. Praise the Lord. Because the Hallelujah. Bible says, servants are not there forever. Servants can depart from the house. It is the son that stays in the house. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible asks us also to honor widows. Can you read with me uh, from the book of 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 3? Why widows? The Bible says we should honor widows, not just any woman who has lost her husband, but widows indeed. Who are widows indeed? The Bible gave, gave us uh, uh, guidelines to whom widows indeed are. He said they have to be above 60. He said and if there is a, a young woman who has lost her husband. The Bible says they should remarry. Let the woman go and remarry. Oh, I love my husband. I don't want to. No. The Bible instructs you to remarry. And we will read from the word of God. That is the instruction. Go and remarry. And if you don't want to remarry, it is good if your husband has left you an inheritance that you can use to look after yourself. Fine. But the church has been instructed not to look after you. The instruction is go and remarry. He said those who are above 60, and who are wives of just one husband, not a woman who has had multiple husbands. Everything that should be done in the house of God and in the kingdom of God must follow the word of God. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 3. Honor widows that are widows indeed. Honor widows that are widows indeed. Yes. But if any widow have children or nephews, yes. let them first to show pity at home yes. and to require their parents, for yes. that is good and acceptable before God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go to 9, 1 Timothy 5, 9. Let not a widow be taken to the number under three score years old, Aha. having been the wife of one man. Aha. That is the criteria. The widow must be at least 60 years old, having been the wife of one husband. Yes? Well reported of for good works. Yes. If she have brought up children. Yes. If she have lodged strangers. Yes. If she have watched the saints' feet. Yes. If she have relieved the afflicted. Yes. If she have diligently followed every good work. Yes. So there's a criteria. She can, you can't just bring me and say, oh, they are widows. No, they must have worked in the body. They must, have, they must be part of the body. They must have contributed to the body. But if we find some that are not part of the body and they have not contributed, but we can also relieve their suffering because they are needy. And it, it is the responsibility of God to look after everyone. But we are co-workers with Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The number 10 on the list is everybody else, you and I. We need to honor ourselves also. We were instructed to possess our vessels in sanctification, being separated unto God and honor. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, 
Furthermore, give, then, yes, we beseech you, brethren, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, yes, that as you have received of us, mm -hmm. how you ought to walk and to please God, mm -hmm. so you would abound more and more. Yes. Okay. Go with me to First Corinthians chapter six, verse twenty. One of the greatest ways we can, we can honor God is to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice unto God. Amen. Amen. Offering our bodies as a living sacrifice. What does this mean? It means if you are married, you should park your own car in your garage. I won't say more than that, but you can read that scripture for us. 1 Corinthians 6.20 for ye are bought with a price. You are bought with a price. Therefore, mm -hmm. glorify God in your body. Glorify God in your body. And in your spirit. Yes. Which are God's. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. I will go with you. I will go through quickly. Rewards of honoring those that are set above you. If you go with me to the book of, I hope people are writing these scriptures down. So that you don't say, oh, Pastor Gabriel has come with gimmicks. These are not gimmicks. These are kingdom principles. If you go to the book of um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. I want us to read that scripture, Ephesians chapter 6, 1 to 3. Ephesians. These are the rewards of honoring a father. And when you honor the father you will see the results of it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Children. Children. Obey your parents in the Lord. Obey your parents in the Lord. He knows you. We have parents in the Lord. Spiritual parents we are talking about now. Obey them. When they give you counsel, instructions, obey. Today, we have people who believe they even know more than the spirit, the people God has put above them. I don't agree. I don't understand. If there's anything anyone speaks to you, any instruction that is given to you, you don't understand, it is better to go and say, sir, what you said, can you explain to me further? But even still, you still don't understand, I believe that an instruction is an instruction. Amen. Amen. Violating that godly, as long as the instruction, it is within the realms of the scriptures. They are not taking you out of the scriptures. It is to be obeyed because God is watching. Because it's a violation and it's a dishonor to God because that God put that person above you. You can fast and pray, but it might not be well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, go on, sir. For this is right. He said, obey your parents for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and thy mother. Which is the first commanded, commandment with promise. This is the first commandment with a promise. That it may be well with thee. That it may be well with thee. And thou may live long on the earth. That you might live long on the earth. There is no point living long on the earth if it is not well with you. That will be a life full of calamity and problems and you know, and lack. Why do you want to live long if you are not going to live your life well? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And it is not because anybody wants to take anything from you, but Abraham, the father of faith, before he received the blessing, he gave God the ultimate sacrifice. His son he gave to God. He was pre no argument. He presented before God. He honored God. But today, many people, yeah, the temple veil has torn, and I uh, have a direct relationship with God. Somebody has even said, oh, my own blessing will not come from any person. It will come directly from God. Praise the Lord. I thank God for your life. But God has set people above you, and there's an authority there's a power God has invested in their life. There's something that's called spiritual authority. There are people who have authority over you. And when you honor them, it will be well with you, according to the word of God. Amen. 
When it is well with you, you will be successful. When it is well with you, you will overcome challenges. When it is well with you, you will thrive. When it is well with you, you will flower. When it is well with you, you will be fruitful. Amen. The Bible says, the fruit of the womb is a reward. Is a reward of what? A reward of honor. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Whether fruitfulness in the ministry, whether biological fruitfulness, fruit of the womb, you want your business to prosper. You honor a father and he will speak a word. I said, that business will not go down. And it will be so. When it is well with you, things become easy. Because that is one of the advantages of having fathers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Fathers make things easy. If you honor them, it becomes easier. How do I know? If you look at the relationship between Prophet Elijah and Elisha, Prophet Elijah became a stepping stone for Elisha. How do I mean? It was where Prophet Elijah stopped that Elisha started from. The last miracle Prophet Elijah did, he split River Jordan. But that was the first miracle Elisha did. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he was lifted up. And that is why the Bible says, as the arrow is in the hand of a mighty man. So are children. Why? Because it is your father that will shoot you for that. And immediately somebody shoots you high, it means he's lifting you above his own level. And that is why it takes honor. It will take that man being happy from his leons. And they will release the miracle seed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. By the special grace of God, I have a father. And I do my best to honor that father. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Honoring your father will make you be a fruit, make you expand. Psalm 127 verse 5, 127 verse 4 says, Like arrows, you see, in the hand of the mighty man, so are children. Number two, why do you honor fathers? That you might live long. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What, do, what does it mean to live long? It means if there's an epidemic, things that usually kill other people will not kill you. And that is why it says in Hebrews 13, 17, said because they it said, submit to them that have authority over you. said, because they are the ones that guard after your soul. He said, but I thought it is God that is guarding after my soul. The Lord Jesus gave a good example. He said, Peter, the enemy has planned to sift. He said, but I had prayed, past tense. I had prayed for you. So, Father, stand in the gap for you. They speak into your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three, one of, another advantage of honoring fathers is that you will receive a spiritual inheritance. If you read in the book of um, Exodus, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, the Bible tells us that God put the spirit, not Moses. God put the spirit that was on Moses on the 70 elders. By the special grace of God, I know the men of God that I have inherited from spiritually. I know the men of God that I served, that I noticed a transfer of unction. They didn't need to lay hands on me. It came naturally from God. They don't need to lay hands. As long as you are honoring them, whether they are there or not. Many people like to do eye service. It's when you see the man of God, you begin to run up and down. What about when he's not there? Are you supporting his work? Are you a pillar in the ministry? Are you a caterpillar to that ministry? The ministry you are part of that you are benefiting from, are you honoring that ministry and that man of God? Are you honoring him with your substance? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. These things, they do matter. Talking about spiritual inheritance. You can read from 2 Kings 3 and 11 and 2 Kings 2 and 12. We won't read that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. El Prophet Elisha served Elijah and he got a spiritual inheritance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you can see in the life of Gehazi, who was serving Prophet Elisha, he dishonored the man of God. 
and he did not get that spiritual inheritance. And I can assure you that he did not live long because the man of God spoke into his life because he has dishonored him and he was leprous. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I would not be surprised if that was the disease that brought the end to his life. He did not get the blessing, the blessing from that man of God. Neither did he get the spiritual inheritance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. These are important things that we are missing in the church today. We don't understand honor. Everybody believes, yes, I can speak to God by myself. Some don't even go to church. I don't like that pastor. So they sit by the telly like this, and that is their church. Forgetting that the Bible says, forsake not the assembly of the saints. You are supposed to be part of a body. You are not supposed to be a lone ranger. Why? Because the Bible says, one shall chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand. Say, forsake not the assembling of the, of the saints. Say, pray for one another and honor one another. There's this uh, uh, scripture that people have not really gotten understanding of. Philippians 4.19. Everybody claims it. They think it's a promise or a prayer. It is not a prayer. It is a blessing that was released by Apostle Paul. Philippians 4.19. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Many people think this is a prayer. Oh, my God shall supply all my needs. No. If you go from 15... You see where Apostle Paul said clearly, you have continued to honor me with your substance. Even when Apostle Paul said, no, stop. I had more than enough. They said, no. He said, everywhere that I went, you kept on honoring me with your substance that I had need for nothing. Then he said, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. It was not a prayer. He blessed them. He spoke from his loins. And as he spoke, all those who supported the ministry of Paul, they began to blossom. They began to see increase. Dearly beloved, hear me clearly. Honoring your man of God, your woman of God, or those set above you, Will can change your life. It will change your life as you honor them, as you obey them, as you submit yourself to them. By the time you are arguing, you are contending, they speak and you speak. When my father speaks, I shut up. It is yes, sir. Okay, sir. Because I honor my man of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In these days, where there are so many things going on around the world. You have attacks. It is our God who is able to keep us safe. But fathers have a part to play also. Out of the 12 apostles, there was a man who stood out. They called him John the Beloved. Many people say, People who did not get catch the revelation, they said, oh, the Lord Jesus loved him the more. No, he loved the Lord the more. He honored the Lord the more. He was indestructible. He was the one that outlived all the other apostles. Why? Because he honored the Lord more. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, that it might be well with you and that your days might be long. In these days that there's persecution everywhere, Honor your father that you might receive counsel and that you might get the blessing that you might live long and that it might be well with you. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. I just want us to pray as we close. Our heavenly father, Thank you, Jesus. as your word has gone forth, father, give understanding. Let the Holy Spirit continue to teach your people. Let them catch understanding. Amen. Open the eyes of their understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, let it be washing of water by the word. Amen. Father, as you have commissioned us and you have given us this mandate, let this word spark spiritual fires in the kingdom of God. Amen. Let this word enlighten people. Amen. Let this word bring breakthroughs. Amen. Father, prayers that have been delayed, 
Let the honor seed release it. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As many as go forth uh, and obey this word and honor those that have been set uh, above them according to your word. Uh, Every door that has been shut against them, Father, I prophesy. Let it open now. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, those uh, who are looking for the fruit of the womb, uh, as they honor those set above them uh, with their substance, Father, I prophesy. Uh, by the turn of the season, let them be with child in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I ask that you protect your children. Amen. The enemy has raised uh, a standard against your children. Around the world, we have terrorists, ISIS. Father, I pray, cover your children with the shadow of your wings. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, raise intercessors, O oh Lord, Amen. for the kingdom. Amen. Father, I intercede right now. Anywhere upon the face of the earth where your children are being persecuted. Father, we raise a standard in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, let them be scattered in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Father, we dispatch warring angels now. Amen. The same you sent against the Amorites. You sent against the Philistines. Father, we release the host of heaven. Amen. Let the host of heaven clash with the kingdom of darkness. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we ask for breakthroughs. We ask for victory in the camp of the saints. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, let there be victory in the camp of the saints. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching Moment of Refreshing. Hallelujah. We'll be here by the special grace of God next week, Amen. Wednesday, 10 to 11. Amen. Your life will never be the same. You'll receive light from the world. God bless you. It is well with you. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.